everyone, welcome back. Today we are going to be talking about the brand Louis Vuitton and giving you an intro with the history, some classic pieces, and some information about resale value. So in 1854, Louis Vuitton began his very own shop after working for 17 years as a box designer, including being one of the personal box designers to Emperor Napoleon in France. And when he started out his business, one of the things that he continued to do as well as his son after him was to really be very innovative with what they were producing. So he produced canvas cases and canvas travel gear instead of leather, which was predominantly used at the time. He also, instead of having domed travel cases, he had square rectangular boxes that were able to be stacked. And those were two very big things. Um, actually, on the Titanic, some of the only things that survived were actually packaged in Louis Vuitton canvas cases because the canvas was waterproof and the boxes themselves were designed with such a high quality that they were actually airtight. And so nothing was able to seep in and the contents of those Louis Vuitton trunks were actually able to be preserved. In 1888, his cases had grown to such popularity that he was having a very big trouble with counterfeit even after various measures of producing different colors and different patterns. And so this is when he first revealed the Damiera Bean, which is the brown checkerboard print, which had um, Louis Vuitton in the checkerboard print. However, this was not enough. And so in 1896, his son, who had taken over running the company after his father's death, produced the monogram print for the first time, which is the LV print that we still see so much today. So the monogram is actually not the original, even though it was viewed as the classic, the classic Louis Vuitton print, it is actually the second version that was produced. Um, now, Louis Vuitton is still one of the most counterfeit brands in the world, so obviously this hasn't helped entirely, but this was a very big deal for them at the time. Um, Louis Vuitton stayed just exclusively as a trunk maker until 1930, which is when they introduced their first travel bag, which was the Keep All Bag, which is a version right behind me here. And then two years later, they produced the Little Sister smaller version of the Keep All, which is known as the Speedy. This is the bag that Audrey Hepburn famously asked to have made in a smaller size, which became the Speedy 25. And from there, Louis Vuitton has made various versions with the Speedy going up to a size 35 and the Keep Ball starting at a size 40. They're essentially the exact same bag, um, same shape, same design features. There's, it's just that they call the Speedy the smaller version as that is the purse version, and the Keep Ball is seen as the duffel travel version. And they continued to produce bags, adding the Noé, the Papillon, and the Alma bag. Um, the Alma is the only one that is still really truly produced in mass today, as well as the Speedy. The Noé has been updated to the Neo Noé, and then the Papillon is only very rarely released and oftentimes only in limited editions. Um, in 1997, was the next biggest transformation for the brand, and that is when they brought on Mark Jacobs as the first creative, creative director for the brand. And the reason they brought him on is to actually design the ready-to-wear clothing. And so this is when Louis Vuitton started making clothing and jewelry as well as travel cases and purses, and he continued as a director of the brand until he started his own brand, Mark Jacobs, um, which he actually did under the umbrella of Louis Vuitton's corporate conglomerate, which houses many different luxury brands today, and you can actually buy stock in them. So that's just a little bit of brief history about the brand. The most classic pieces of the Speedy the, and the Alma you still see today, you still see the Keep All, um, you still do see the cases, however the cases are exorbitantly expensive. I believe the smallest one, which is just a tiny little square box that can hold maybe a couple of pieces of jewelry, starts at around $5,000. And so they are very, very expensive. I would actually love to add a very old case 
at some point one day way in the future as a collector's piece not to be used just as a very old piece to have sitting around just to get to have um but as far as value for the brand Louis Vuitton is one of the brands that is seen to hold its value really well particularly based on the pieces that you choose so if you pick a speedy in a damier bean canvas that is going to hold its value very well oftentimes selling for about retail if not over retail in addition to other popular bags such as the never full tote the pochette matisse as well as the mini pochette are some of the ones that you will typically see the, having the potential to go over their resale value they're not special editions um, special editions of the bag will also have extremely good resale as they are very limited in production and they are oftentimes very desired so you will see that piece go above retail if you're looking for them that was a special edition or a limited run the canvas pieces themselves do typically hold their value the best out of all of the different materials produced by Louis Vuitton there is also the epi leather which is a very durable scratch resistant leather however it is the least popular option offered by Louis Vuitton and therefore is also the item that is going to hold its value the least well um, that does not mean that it's not as good quality it's just not as popular so if you're looking for an epi leather bag you're going to have a really good chance to have a good deal on it, it within the canvas itself backtracking just for a second the demi arabine because it is going to be the most durable has the highest resale value because it shows the less the least amount of wear the monogram that has black coated leather will also have a very high resale value as it is another bag that is extremely durable the demi Azor is typically going to be the hardest one to find in good condition so if you're able to find a piece in really good condition it will also have extremely high resale just because it's very rare since the white canvas does get color transfer as well as the vachetta having the ability to get stained very easily there's also the emprunt leather which is a solid color solid color leather that is stamped with the lv monogram in it you can typically find relatively decent prices on those bags secondhand. I wouldn't say they're the best deals ever, however they don't hold their value quite as well as the canvas just because they can show more wear since it is a smoother leather. And then finally, the leather that is used for the Capucines bag is typically going to not have as great of resale just because the bag is so expensive in store that when you resell it it just doesn't carry the same value as since it is viewed as the top line to buy a resell is not as desirable to do um a cabbie scenes bag is something that i would love to get at some point however i would absolutely be going the resale market route as you can save about two to three thousand dollars off the price and still get a bag that's in really excellent condition so that covers bags louis vuitton also has shoes and clothing their ready-to-wear pieces do not actually hold their value very well. I will regularly see pieces that were over $2,000 retail selling for just a few hundred dollars, even new with tags, just because their clothing is not seen as one of the most desirable of the ready-to-wear luxury designer houses. Um, they are still nice quality. It's still beautiful pieces they just aren't quite as desired and i bet that part of that has to do with the fact that they have only been doing ready to wear since 1997 and so they are not as storied in their ready to wear as houses such as chanel that are famous for their tweed suits so this is just a brief little video talking about the history of louis vuitton if you want to know more leave a comment down below and i can answer any questions in a part two of this video if that's something you guys would be interested in I will be doing a, another Louis Vuitton video on Wednesday talking about what actually fits inside the Keep All 55 for travel if this is a bag that you guys are considering. So I hope you'll tune back in for that and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye!